Hello and welcome. My name is Ritika Jhanji Jagtiani and you're watching Darwin Platform Group of Companies presents Inventive India, a show where we understand the sectors that help shape the nation. Today, a special focus on the IT industry. The IT industry is growing rapidly and accounted for 8% of India's GDP in 2020 and it's expected to expand to 10% GDP by 2025. As of financial year 2020, the IT industry employed 4.3 million people and this number is only set to grow. Before we take a deeper look at the IT sector, let's take a look at an AV specially made on the sector. India's IT sector is growing exponentially and disruptive technologies such as cloud computing, AI, robotics and data analytics are offering new avenues of growth across verticals. This push towards scaling new technologies has boosted global investments in India. Homegrown companies are focusing to invest internationally to expand global footprint and enhance the global delivery centers. With its low cost advantage, India has turned into a preferred global destination for IT. The country's rapidly growing urban infrastructure has fostered several IT centers in the country and the sector market is projected to reach 100 billion US dollars by 2025. With digital transformation driven by government policy support, corporate investment and a growing skilled workforce, the Indian IT sector will continue to bloom and transform the nation. Now it's time we go across to Dr. Raja Rai Chaudhary from Darwin Platform Group of Companies and understand from him the contribution and the plans to expand in the IT sector. The Darwin Platform Group of Companies consists of about 27 business verticals and to take these verticals ahead it's an imperative that we have the best of technology systems. We at the Darwin Platform Information Technologies Limited take care of the business interest of each and every vertical, be it retail, be it FMCG, pharmaceuticals, insurance, banking, oil exploration, or refineries, real estate, infrastructure, aviation, shipping, logistics, you name it all. Information technology is a key cornerstone for business success. Opportunities are there to focus on areas like robotics and automation, for which we are in a strategic partnership with the Watson University at Hyderabad. We are working on coming out with a robot for business support in the consumer world. We are also working with helicopter drone systems and molecular nanotechnology. So there are a lot of interesting things which are happening at the Darwin Platform Group with respect to information systems. And we are very bullish that information systems will propel Darwin as a business to greater heights. And it's time I bring in my panel for the show today, starting with Mr. Raja Roy Chaudhary, head Darwin Platform Group of Companies as Group CEO. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. We also have with us on the show, Mr. Manish Singhal, who's the founding partner, Pi Ventures. A very warm welcome to you too, Mr. Manish. Thank you so much. And we have with us Mr. Sharad Chandra, who is a blockchain expert. Thank you so much, Mr. Sharad, for making time out for this very, very special show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. And now that I have my guests with me, let's just start talking about, uh, we're going to do a detailed analysis. We're going to look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities that lie ahead of the IT sector. And let me begin this with Dr. Raja Roy Chaudhary. Um, uh, you know, uh, about uh, the employment force in this very sector. Let's talk a little bit more about that in detail because due to remote working, IT sector has witnessed a major hiring surge. In fact, I was reading that IT companies are looking out for more and more office spaces, which is a great news. So how is the sector contributing to the overall employment in the country? You see, when you talk about COVID-19, it has actually broken down cultural and technological barriers that earlier had prevented remote work. And there has been a structural shift which has been caused for people to enable them uh, work from home. Uh, since the government lifted the lockdown, um, hiring in the information technology sector uh, has increased. And, uh, you know, people actually prefer the work from home model. If you look at uh, a bit of statistics, 
places like Bangalore, there has been a 31% increase in hiring, followed by Hyderabad at 28%, Pune at 24%, and even tied to cities like Ahmedabad and Vadodara has about 30 and 20% respectively. Um, this has been a fabulous time for IT business to manifest itself. Great, so let me, let me take this a little further and move across to Mr. Mani Singhal here. Uh, Mr. Singhal, just as Dr. Chaudhary said that, you know, um, the, the, the lines blurred and IT, of course, India is known for its IT prowess all over the world and its globe's preferred sourcing market. So in the last two years, whatever has happened, the, the surge in the demand, of course, has happened globally, So, which means there are a whole lot of opportunities out there for India. So could you outline some of the factors that make India the globe's preferred sourcing market and what are the key growth drivers in the sector? And one of the key things that I have seen, at least in the last uh, few years, is that India is not a destination for the global uh, players now just for the cost, but also for the kind of work that is being done here. Our companies are solving problems which otherwise are not getting solved across the globe. And uh, their products, uh, our products are, uh, you know, hitting the global benchmarks. So I think uh, one of the key growth drivers apart from the cost, which continues to be in our favor, is the quality of work that is happening over here across the board, across sectors. And the key growth uh, driver will continue to remain the same. Actually, it's not just about numbers, it's about quality. So if we start uh, keeping the momentum on the kind of work our companies are uh, doing at the global scale, I think India will continue to remain a dominant force in the play. Sure. Let, let's go across to Mr. Sharad Chandra here because, of course, there are certain weaknesses um, and one of them is the much-awaited entry of 5G here. Uh, Mr. Sharad, it's considered, you know, it's um, talked about that 5G is going to bring about the next big shift in the IT sector. But the delayed entry of 5G into India, of course, is affecting the sector's growth as compared to the global counterparts. What do you have to say about that? I, I think the, the government has been very proactive when it comes to 5G, right? And even uh, the some collaborations with 6G uh, networks uh, with some other countries. But if you look at 5G, uh, maybe we have started a bit late, but uh, the potential 5G offers to a digital transformation. The low latency, high, high uh, speed networks can bring a lot of change to how health, healthcare is being driven in India. And if you look at COVID rights and look at the telemedicine uh, and, and telehealth numbers, they go into millions now. The, the e Sanjeevni. Uh, platform of the government. Now, if you look at 5G, it, it can bring a paradigm shift to how healthcare is, uh, is delivered, how other citizen services are delivered, how it can also improve efficiencies in smart manufacturing coupled with blockchain. Uh, that's where my in area lies. So both 5G and blockchain can work in tandem and bring a lot of benefits to both manufacturing industry in general, healthcare, medicine, and overall, overall industry 4.2 technologies together. Right, and the, and the other important part is also the, the reach of the IT revolution that we talk about. Let me bring this up to you, Dr. Chaudhary here. The remotest parts of the country, they have still not witnessed the IT revolution. Um, what are the roadblocks that we need to overcome to ensure that every Indian reaps the benefits of this sector? You see, when you talk about India, there is the urban sector, the semi-urban sector, and the rural sector. And to ensure that we create the right connect, uh, telecommunications has to be of the highest order. And this is where we see serious connectivity issues or challenges. Uh, decent internet uh, connection is needed to be able to do any sensible work over the internet. Um, currently, we are talking about 5G, but you 4G or even 3G network do not hold up. Thus, huge investments and improvements in internet and network connectivity um, is the need of the hour. Apart from connectivity, uh, availability of cloud infrastructure at an affordable cost uh, is surely an impediment. Many businesses, unfortunately, still prefer going offline uh, they have uh, issues with respect to what they consider as prohibitive cost or hassles of going online. Uh, when we talk about India, you know, there is India, which is about 25%, and there is Bharat Gosh, which is 75% of the size of the country. Uh, 
and to accelerate sustainable development, it is critical that the rural population benefits from what we call the global information explosion and thereby mitigating or reducing the educational and technological gaps between the backward and the forward sections of the society. Right. So, hope hope we can fill these gaps up so that every Indian can really reap the benefits of this sector. But there have been some really positive developments also. Um, Mr. Sharath, on July 2nd, 2021, the Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises launched six technology innovation platforms to develop technologies for globally competitive manufacturing in India. How do you see that panning out? I think that's a very great move. And with uh, PLI schemes and production linked incentive schemes, uh, we can be the next global manufacturing hub. Uh, as of now, the China has that coveted position. But if you look at with these incentives when it comes to smartphone manufacturing, even manufacturing of uh, heavy metal industries, as well as now with with uh, with explosion of uh, uh, drone technologies, right, and both IoT, with the, these uh, proactive schemes and incentives by the government, um, India can be a front runner when it comes to manufacturing new cutting edge technologies. And I'm very bullish on the way drone technologies and the way government has liberalized drone and, and geospatial technologies. We can be one of the front runners. And again, a lot will depend upon how startups come in and, and bring uh, innovative solutions together. Great. Loads of opportunities on the road ahead. It's about time we cap into them. Um, for now, it's time for us to head into a short break in Darwin Platform Group of Companies presents Inventive India. We spoke about strengths. We spoke about the weaknesses the sector faces and some of the threats also need to be attended to. And of course, the key trends that will chart the future of Indian IT sector. We'll do all of that after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back after the break. You're watching Darwin Platform Group of Companies presents Inventive India, where we are taking a special look at the IT sector and the country. Now, we understand that no sector can work in isolation. Collaborative is the way forward. It is through collaborations that we take on new challenges and surge ahead. With that thought, I would like to go across to my guest, Mr. Manish Singhal, who's with me on the show today. Mr. Manish, I would like to ask you that how can we build strategic partnership between government and corporates to build AI and emerging technologies? I think uh, government has been very forward looking in the last few years. We've seen uh, several initiatives from Niti Aayog. Uh, to partner with the corporates in different forms. And I think there is a special initiative for AI itself from the PIO, which is actually taking uh, shape. Uh, overall, I think uh, uh, the best way to partner with the corporate is to kind of uh, have corporates uh, involved more uh, deeply in the government projects as well, I think. And that is also happening, uh, by the way, I, I do believe that the uh, whole COVID portal that uh, was done was uh, done with a partnership with the, with, with the private company and so on and so forth. So uh, things are happening. I think we are looking forward to some more uh, initiatives uh, in partnership with Niti Aayog and corporate and general uh, uh, broad uh, government as a customer for corporates to work with should uh, should uh, incentivize uh, the, uh, the sector a bit more. Right. And also we're seeing a lot of action in the blockchain space. And we have Mr. Sharad Chandra with us, who's a blockchain expert. Mr. Sharad Mehti released a draft national strategy on blockchain to envisage the creation of a national level blockchain framework. Can you break that down um, in simple words for our viewers? So what Mehti has done, they have uh, created a white paper or draft paper of sorts where they're outlining a national uh, blockchain infrastructure, which will have a regulatory sandbox treated as more like a uh, experiment uh, hub where new startups both and corporates can come together and solve problems of governance, be it uh, government to government processes or government to citizen processes, G2C processes. And there are certain use cases which governments is quite uh, bullish on. One is healthcare, uh, land records, e-voting. Now with IT Madras uh, and Tamil Nadu e-governance agency, there are a couple of projects on e-voting going on and election commission is already working on a couple of projects and we might see some implementation in the coming looks of elections. So voting is one primary use case. When it comes to land records uh, and property registration to begin with, in Karnataka, uh, property records are being uh, managed on, on blockchain. 
when it comes to land records, uh, there's a national uh, blockchain project in collaboration with IIT Kanpur and NMIT. Uh, so they are looking at uh, digitizing and maintaining land records and blockchain, especially for the state of Uttar Pradesh. But what certain other states are doing, they have kind of taken a step further, and uh, especially Tamil Nadu, uh, they have a national, uh, sorry, they have a state blockchain project where it's more like a blockchain backbone. So Meti speaks about a national uh, level blockchain backbone or a national level blockchain infrastructure we have Tamil Nadu which has kind of gone a step further and already implemented uh, a national uh, a state blockchain project where RFP is being rolled out so states are also taking a leap out of uh, what Meti has proposed and it will also come down to how both center and state can work, work together especially when it comes to implementing blockchain projects at scale. Great, thank you for breaking it down so simply um, uh, for our viewers and of course there are loads of opportunities that are being seen in the blockchain space but there is um, this whole conversation around cloud computing and I would like to go across to Mr. Manish with that. Now cloud computing Mr. Manish has become the service model of choice for both business critical services like banking, payments, as well as the non-critical ones, for example, online gaming. But what are the benefits and also the risks that are associated with cloud computing? I think cloud computing has been around for many years now. So it's no longer a new technology per se, but it is finding more and more wider adoption. In fact, if you don't have a cloud presence, people are asking why, what's wrong with you, right? So it's gone to that level. Of course, it enables people to interact easily, get uh, get online, get their services to a wider audience. And of course, on the risk, risk side, you can uh, be prone to hacking if you're storing not your data properly. Uh, so those are the, probably the things that can go wrong. But overall, cloud computing is uh, is the norm today. I mean, if everybody has to be on the cloud in some way or the other. Right, right. Thank you for sharing those insights with us. For my next question, I would like to go across to Mr. Uh, uh, Raja Roy Chaudhary. Uh, Dr. Chaudhary, um, there is this whole conversation also happening about um, robotics, about robots coming in and replacing the human workforce, although India has only three robots for every 10,000 workers, but the domestic robotics industry is actually growing at an exponential rate. So do we see this replacing the human workforce? And if you see that happening, then which industries do you think will actually bear the brunt of it? Well, that's a good question. But you, when you look at robotics, uh, the initial survey found that low-skilled services like facilities management uh, would be using robots big time. But uh, I was going through an Oxford economics analysis which said that robotics revolution is going to accelerate uh, rapid technology improvements in uh, industrial automation, engineering, energy, uh, logistics, and supply chain, you know, with the help of AI and machine learning. Fortunately, India Incorporated is moving to robotics much faster than its worldwide peers. When you talk about the unfortunate reality is that individuals at the bottom of the labor force possibly would be hardest hit by such robotic automation. You know, uh, to put things in a layman's context, when you talk about the typewriter, it actually did not replace the stenographer. Instead, it taught people how to type. So the reality is, robots to some extent can destroy low-end jobs, but at the same time, the major population will help themselves to upskill and retool in order to make productive use of such a robotic phenomenon. Right, and robots will kind of make us take up the challenge of maybe upskill and better ourselves and um, you know uh, conform to the newer technologies. Uh, that's a great insight you shared, Dr. Chaudhary. Um, I would request all my guests to please stay with us because we're going to bring about a very interesting case study in the show now. And we're going to show that how IT sector is actually helping transform other sectors. So case in point is how AI will transform healthcare in India. Dozi is spearheading this effort and we have Mudit Tantwari, who's the co-founder and chief executive officer and also Gaurav Parchani, who's the co-founder and tech adozi to tell us more about it.
AI in healthcare is fairly nascent. We have not even explored the full depth of AI in healthcare. We are at the tip of the iceberg and there's a lot more to be explored. Over the last five years or so, we have explored solutions in diagnostics and radiology, but then there's a lot more to explore. Uh, predictive analytics, patient safety, patient monitoring uh, are one of the key areas where we can do triaging and smart and uh, smart screening and predictive analytics. Uh, for this, we would need a culture change. We would need uh, high quality digitized data uh, in place where the healthcare professionals and the technology community needs to come together and explore the power of AI. Without AI, there is no future because our healthcare systems are already strained right now. We have over uh, 1 is to 40 nurse to patient ratio. We have over 1 is to 1000 patient to specialist ratio. And only and only way we can provide quality care to every individual is by using and leveraging technology like uh, artificial intelligence. Dozy is India's first contactless patient vitals monitor. It converts any bed into a step-down ICU in less than two minutes at a fraction of a cost. Its sensor sheet once placed under the mattress monitors person's heart rate, respiration, blood pressure, temperature and oxygen saturation. The data is relayed using internet uh, to remote monitoring stations where hundreds of patients can be monitored remotely. And using the AI algorithms, the alerts are generated uh, using which timely actions can, can be taken saving lives. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Dozy helped India scale up the critical care infrastructure. We worked with over 100 hospitals in marquee institutions like the Indian Army, Air Force, Navy, government medical colleges, state governments. We help convert normal beds into step-down ICU beds by providing remote monitoring solutions uh, to a remote monitoring station without the nurses or the doctors having going inside the COVID wards. We monitored over uh, 40,000 COVID patients on 5,000 plus step-down ICU beds throughout the last one and a half years. We helped save more than 90,000 nursing hours and ultimately led to 2,000 plus uh, timely transfers that uh, helped save lives. At Homes, where we have one specialist for more than 5,000 to 7,000 patients, Dozy is connecting every patient to clinician using continuum of care, even outside the hospital premises as well. Dozy is simplifying the way healthcare is delivered, be it hospitals or at homes, making it accessible, affordable, and available for every Indian. In near future, Predictive analytics, personalization, and digitization is going to create a healthcare that is transparent and patient centric. And with the advancement in sensing technology, cloud, and artificial intelligence, Dozy is all set to create new benchmark in patient safety and improving patient outcomes to realize the dream of Ayushman Bharat digital mission launched by Honorable Prime Minister Naren Modi. So that is a very interesting case study about how IT sector is helping revolutionize the healthcare sector in the country. And before we conclude, I would like to take you through the top 10 IT insights we derived from today's discussion. India's IT sector to reach 100 billion US dollars by 2025. High speeds of 5G networks will alter Indian healthcare space. 5G will bring a paradigm shift across business verticals. Methi envisages the creation of a national-level blockchain framework. Huge investment in the network connectivity is need of the hour. Various AI-based initiatives by Niti Aayog are taking shape in India. E-voting may be part of a change in Lok Sabha elections 2024. Cloud computing is now the norm in the IT market. India is adopting robotics faster than the world. Leveraging the use of AI in healthcare will provide quality care to patients. The IT sector has truly helped India transform from an agrarian economy to a knowledge-based one. It has put India on the global map and will continue to shape a promising future. So stay tuned with us to witness the ever-changing dynamics of the Indian IT sector. At this point, I would like to thank all our panelists on the show, Dr. Raja Roy Chaudhary, Mr. Manish Singhal and Mr. Sharachandra for sharing their valuable insights. 
And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to an end. To Darwin Platform Group of Companies presents Inventive India. Stay safe and stay updated with Republic TV.